Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to do a review and comparison between the Sony ZV-10 and also the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Yes, the recent release iPhone 15 Pro Max. And this one actually belongs to my father. I don't own it. So let's see how strong is the 48 megapixel from this iPhone and whether the Sony ZV-10 can hold up. All right guys, before we start, it is important that we know the spec between these two cameras. First is the iPhone 15 Pro. It has a smaller sensor, 48 megapixel main camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 12 megapixels telephoto lens. For the Sony ZV-E10, it is an APS-C camera, comes with a larger sensor. Technically, it should perform better than the iPhone, with better bokeh, better low light, and also better dynamic range. iPhone 15 Pro and also the Sony ZV-E10. So starting off, we are going to compare the photo capabilities of both of these cameras. So we are going to compare, you know, portrait, landscape, and also subject shooting. All right, guys, so right now, I'll try my best to shoot similar image out of these two cameras. So right now, I'm in auto mode. Okay, I just took a picture with the Sony ZV-E10. And then took one with the iPhone. Now I'm going to 2X. Well, for the first two photos with the LCD screen, I just see that the Sony ZV-10 actually perform much better in photo. But the problem is that we actually have the 120mm telephoto lens from the iPhone 15 Pro. So let's use the clear image zoom to the maximum here to try to match that 120mm focal line. Yeah, I got it. So we are going to put it into Lightroom and see the result. As you can see, the iPhone is just much sharper in overall as compared to the ZV-10 because I just digitally cropped in with the 24 megapixel. I think the ZV-10 still did a great job. I mean, the background detail is just okay unless I zoom in. Both of this is doing a great job, especially this part here. You can see the details is still there. It's just not as sharp as the iPhone 15 Pro. And also in the middle, you can see the red leaf. It still has some details there. Alright, so guys, right now let's test out the landscape photo from both of these cameras. So with the iPhone 15 Pro, I can just zoom into you know x0.5, which is 13 mm, which is actually very very wide. I can't even do that with the Sony ZV-10, you know. 16 mm, which is equivalent to 24, is just not wide enough. So by comparing both of these photos, the iPhone just come in much handy. And another thing with the iPhone is that. I'm able to capture the sky much more easily than the Sony ZV-10 which basically means that the processing power of the iPhone is so good that it's able to process very fast and able to shoot and show the sky and the cloud. Right now shooting with the Sony ZV-10 is either exposed for the sky or exposed for the things that is beneath the sun. So for the photo capture, it actually only have 24 megapixel, and then I need to turn on the pro roll resolution and control to shoot at 48 megapixel. Only be available on the main camera. So right now, let's test out the 48 versus the 24 with the Sony ZV-10. So I'm going to shoot, yeah, just a landscape here, which is simple. It's be right here. And yeah, guys, in order to produce a non-sharp and very natural looking image from the iPhone, you need to shoot in ProRes. So right now, I'm going to shoot myself here. I'm going to set a timer. Yeah, I'm going to set my ProRes. So I should be standing right here. we can shoot a very close macro image here as you can see so i can focus really really close so the details for the leaf is so 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 crispy it's so nice and for instance if i've just used the sony zv e10 here the closest i can get is like this yeah it's a day and night difference for the macro photography using the sony zv10 and also using the iphone the iPhone is just much, much more convenient on shooting close up like this, you see.
All right, guys, so right now I'm testing a ProRes Lock Profile with the iPhone 15 Pro Max and also the Sony ZV-10. I'm going to test for HLG3 and also S Lock 2. For the iPhone, it's just so convenient. I just click the Lock Profile, then automatically it will help me adjust all the settings for the lock. Well, for the ZV-10, I just need to, you know, expose for two stop for the Sony S Lock 2. Yeah, it's a little bit inconvenient, but let's see whether the result is comparable or is there any difference? So I just noticed that for the slow motion on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you can't really set it to ProRes Log. So we'll just stick with the autopilot profile with the iPhone 15 Pro Max and also my Sony ZV-10. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right guys, so right now I'm on the iPhone 15 Pro. I'm using the phone camera to vlog. So as you can see, everything is so clear. The only thing I don't like about the iPhone is, as you can see, yeah, it will just lights up my hair. It will expose for my face. So it will lights up the details for the black, you see. My black is no longer black. It's like a little bit gray. So, but as you can see, it is day and night difference with the stabilization. The iPhone is actually much better. And what's good about the iPhone? I can still use the cinematic mode, you see? I'm using my cinematic mode. It's in 4K. And yeah, my background become blurry. Yeah, I don't think you can achieve that with the Sony CV10 unless you change the lens. So 4K 30 frames per second. I will walk very, very fast. And let's see how it performs. Good about this iPhone 15 Pro Max is that I can switch lens to the ultra wide lens. So with the Sony ZV10 is just 16 to 50 kit lens. You really need to buy a wide angle lens to block because it's just too tight, even for 24 mm So let's turn on the active stabilization for you guys to see. Right now I'm on standard stabilization. Walking a straight line. So this is active stabilization. Ooh, my head is just so big. So right now I'm in a very very dark room. There's not much light here. We are right now doing a photo shooting in a very very dark room. So immediately you can see when I turn on the iPhone is that automatically switch on the night mode, which is so handy and so quick. It will just automatically shoot high quality low light image because it's using slow shutter automatically so there is not much noise with the iPhone well compared to the ZV-10 it's still some noise there is still some noise with the Sony ZV-10 um, I think this is because the iPhone has did a pretty pretty good job on processing the image and reduce the noise as compared to the ZV-10 there's not much processing going on it is just you know the difference between a camera and a phone Alright guys, so right now, I guess we are in a low light environment. Yeah, when we are in indoor, it's generally low light environment. 
So let's see whether the ZV-E 10 or the iPhone 15 Pro Max has a better low light profile. But generally, if you are shooting in an indoor environment, I guess it will be like this. And then one thing I've noticed is that the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it has a much tighter 24mm. Well, as compared to my Sony ZV-E 10, the 24mm is quite wider. Don't get me wrong guys, I'm not trying to say that iPhone is way better than the ZV-E 10 in terms of low light. Well, for the ZV-E 10, we can still switch lens. So I just turn it to f1.4. You can see there's a significant difference in terms of noise and also the lighting condition here just because I adjust my aperture. So which one is better for you? Choose the iPhone 15 Pro or the Sony ZV-10? Well, I'm sorry, I'm going to give you a very general answer. It depends. It depends whether you are going to use it for content creation or you are going to use it for professional filmmaking. For the Sony ZV-10, you got a very, very good quality 4K footage and also you have access to a lot of email lenses from Sony. Well, for the iPhone, you have three built-in camera lenses, ultra-wide telephoto and a normal wide angle, which is super, super handy. Well, for the comparison that I have done, if you are planning on using a Sony ZV-10 with just a kit lens, you are hardly able to beat the iPhone in terms of ultra-wide angle, low light and also stabilization. If you want to level up your footage, from the Sony ZV-10, we can always switch the lens, get a 1.4 or f1.5 prime lenses. It's going to help you to level up your footage because you can do so well in low light and you can achieve a really great depth of field and good bokeh. I'm using a Sony ZV-10 with the Viltrust 13mm f1.4 lens. If you're going for content creation like TikTok, Instagram, just choose the iPhone 15 Pro. Choose the Sony ZV-10 for professional filmmaking and photography work. For the Sony ZV-10, if you dance in all the settings correctly and you have proper equipment, you can really achieve a better result than the iPhone 15 Pro. Well, because we all know that the iPhone 15 Pro relies heavily on computational photography and videography. Everything is coming from the processing power. So the sensor is still very small, well, our APS-C camera here have a larger sensor as compared to the smaller watching chain sensor on the iPhone. So guys, I hope this video helped you decide that whether you want to get the Sony ZV-10 or you want to get an iPhone 15 Pro. That is, thank you so much for watching this video. Recently, I have received a lot of comments from you guys also. I really appreciate the comments and also the words from you guys. That is so, so, so helpful to motivate me to continue making more videos. And guys, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.